It's a while since I've taken a random washing machine component to bits, so let's do the pump next. And this is a very common style of pump. It's found in lots of different machines. It's one of many universal components that seem to be shared between even different brands. They all come from a common manufacturer. And you've basically got the water inlet here, a filter trap, and the water outlet here, then the motor on the back. And I can show you this when operating, well, I can let you hear it operating because it's going to be quite noisy. It's running. Uh, it's noisier when you sit at the table because there is a bit of vibration to it, but it's not that noisy when it's uh, supported. I mean, they really are not that noisy in operation. And if I uh, unscrew the filter here, and here's an interesting thing. A friend in America had a front loader and they had some debris go down inside change or something like that and it blocked the pump up. Now, in the UK, all you do is you take the front plate off the washing machine and you get this little port in the front of it. Now, keep in mind if you do this, that if the machine's got water in it, all the water will suddenly come out this port because, uh, and that can be quite a lot. So have trays and go at it very gently. But what you do is you, uh, you unscrew this and it's a filter trap with a seal in it. And you can then not only get the debris that was caught in this filter, but you can actually then get access inside to the whole pump. I'll, I'll get a light here so you can see. In fact, now you can see the impeller. Let's power it up again. There we go. So that's the impeller. And uh, it's a very simple system. The impeller, the impeller doesn't even have a particular... It's, I was going to say specific or a particular direction, so I said spistifular direction. Anyway, it doesn't have a spistifular direction because it's a standard synchronous motor. It's, a, it's about the simplest pump it could get. So it can go in either direction and it relies on centrifugal or centripetal effects to actually throw the water out. It sort of drives it outwards and that's what pumps it through this outlet hose here. It's also worth noting that, uh, well, this is the uh, clamp used to put that hose on, you squeeze this, you put the hose over, uh, you put this over the hose first, you uh, put the hose over this and then you squeeze this in with pliers so that when you let it go it grips it on tightly. Uh, but it's also got this little rubber flap. I'm guessing that's just to restrict the flow of stuff back down into it. It's got holes in it so it's not gonna, it's not like a one-way flap, it's just designed to restrict water flow in the opposite direction which is quite strange. Don't know. Uh, it's also got this little port here. I'm not sure that's for it. It's, it's almost as if it's designed to take two different sizes of other pipes, which may be to do with... Oh, and another one there. That's strange. Uh, maybe other drainage things, you know, like, say, for instance, a condenser of combined washer-dryer and the con condensation water gets pumped into this. But anyway, let's uh, take it to bits. I'll get these connections off. I'll actually even disconnect them from the quick test, the cliff quick test. I'm mentioning the cliff quick test because people will ask. It's uh, it's just something that people ask about for some reason. That I'm guessing that they're not that common. They used to be very common, and they seem to be gaining popularity again. Strange. Uh, so that's that disconnected. Uh, let's take a look in here. So let's get the screws. Let's screw the uh, back off this. So one screw, two screws, and three screws will reveal I'm suddenly beginning to think I should have left that cable on. That would have been quite interesting to show the impeller in action. So here's the uh, O-ring that seals that. There's the impeller itself. The inside of this, that's pretty much all you're going to see there. The water gets thrown out against here and finds its way up the outlet valve. This looks as though it's designed to actually go on in different orientations. It really is a universal type thing. That's quite interesting. Oh, ways to test this. If you thought the pump might be faulty, if the pump wasn't running and it was clear and you could take the sump off the end and you could actually get your finger in and that was free to turn and notice it it sort of turns and pulses because it is a, a permanent magnet synchronous motor and you'll notice that when you turn it from one side to the other it turns a certain percentage before it hits that magnetism again and um, it seems to that i think that's a starting uh, sort of aid because it is a simple synchronous motor and can go in either direction i shall talk more of that in a moment but i would say that to test this, one of the easiest things to do, if it was turning freely, is to put this down to, say, 2K perhaps, and measure 
across the two pins at the back and in this case the resistance it's measuring is about 280 ohms. So that's the resistance, as opposed to impedance, the resistance of the coil, the windings of the motor. So how much more can this come to bits? Is this going to come out? I think that is going to come out. That's the cover over the windings. I don't think you'd really change the windings or anything like that, but you know what, it's interesting to know if it, you can get this cover off. I'm not sure why, but... Oh, well, that's it off now. I guess I might not be using this as a spare. They're cheap enough. This was a second-hand one from eBay. There's lots of spares. In the same way that the uh, motor industry has scrapyards that part vehicles and sell the bits online, uh, you also get the same for the appliance industry. You can buy spares from scrap machines. So is this going to come off? Or is there something else holding it on? It does appear to be coming off grudgingly. There we are. Ooh, I was kind of expecting dark windings. It's a very simple motor arrangement. It's basically speaking, a core with the... It's completely sitting in the outside. There's no penetration in at all. That's how it manages to keep uh, the uh, all the electrics dry. That is just sitting around. Was well, this going to come out even anymore? Is this going to liberate from entirely from the thing without actually breaking it any further? Technically speaking, you could just actually pop the motor hub out. Oh, it is coming out. With a little bit of persuasion. Grudgingly coming out, not easily coming out. I think it's biting into the plastic a little bit. Uh, what have I got down here that could uh, help lift that up? He said, grabbing anything that was, seen that was seemingly everything that comes to hand is inappropriate for some reason, technically for the task. Let's uh, leave it out with this, perhaps. Is this going to prise it out? It is working up very gradually, but it's not coming out that easily. If it doesn't come out soon, I shall give up, because I think we've got the gist of it anyway of how this might come out. Oh. Yeah, I'm about to uh, just abandon hope in this. No, I'm not, actually. I'm just going to keep going until I completely give up. Because it is coming out, bit by bit. I want to see if it is changeable. I don't know if it's pressed on at the factory or... Well, it will be pressed on, but I'm wanting to know how easy it would be to change it. It is prizing up. I've said that repeatedly now, that uh, you're, you're all thinking, oh, hurry up and take it off, right now. Right, okay. It's almost there. Oh. I'm not giving up. It does seem to be this bit that's clamping quite tightly onto the core in the middle. I suppose ultimately different... Uh, Voltage models are just the only difference will be these windings. The windings look so uninsulated. Right, that is just, uh, that is not quite defeating me, but it's, uh, it's almost defeating me. Yeah, that is not easy to get off. I'm beginning to, uh, I'm beginning to regret this move. But then again, I regret nothing. I don't think there's anything latching. I think it is just purely the tightness of that over the central core there. These laminations are all kind of loose. That's interesting. There we go. Oh, that might be why. So yeah, there's the base plastic core with the motor. Now the other bit I want out after that is this. Does this unscrew? If we're going to take it to bits, we might as well do the whole thing. Is this going to unscrew, or does this prise out? That is not coming out easily. Oh, it prizes out. I don't think uh, at this point you'd really go this far into a machine if you were trying to fix it. 
you just swap the pump, it's the easiest thing to do. Oh yeah, that's being stopped by, probably by the rotor itself. Uh, now here's an interesting thing. Because the rotor has a certain slack before it, well it's not uh, doing that now because the uh, core is missing from the outside, but the magnet inside is, I wonder, uh, is it clipped into something at the back? It might latch into something in the back here. Um, oh, there it goes, there it goes. Ugh, it's wet. Oh no, that's uh, other people's yuck. And laundry detergent. It smells like tea, that's very odd. Oh, so uh, stuff can, oh that's also full of liquid. That's not a good result. Anyway, the inside of the motor looks like this. Uh, it's got this magnet here. And there is a slot. You know, this uh, outer rotor does not... Well, let's get that off as well then. This outer rotor is not just physically fixed to the magnet. And the reason for that is that when you've got a synchronous motor, um, it's... It goes off, it starts off in a random direction, and if there's any resistance at all, it will just stall and vibrate. So what they do is they, it might try kicking in this direction, meet the resistance of the water, and then it'll kick, the magnet will kick in the other direction, but get inertia up because it's got that slap, slack. And then when it uh, does that, it might get the inertia to actually throw that round. And this explains why. Uh, sometimes you turn, the, you hear the washing machine pump start, instead of just making a sort of one noise like a normal pump, you get that sort of dick, 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 and then it starts. That's this uh, kicking, th that's this kicking backwards and forwards in here uh, until it actually establishes the rotation, which will be in a random direction, but it doesn't matter because it'll still be throwing the water out the ways, which is how the pump works. So uh, can we take any more bits out of this? Oh, not really see it. I shouldn't have done that today. That's just... Ugh, gonna, oh, crusty bits. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what's inside a washing machine pump. They're very easy to change. Just a couple of pipe clamps, make sure you put them on properly. Um, and uh, a couple of electrical connections onto the back of the motor here. And you can just test it by just measuring resistance across that. And there should be a resistance to show that there is, the, unless the windings have gone open circuit. But uh, there you go. Very, very simple and completely modular.